Welcome to the Motivational Midwife. My name's Lynn Jones, and today we have a, a really interesting discussion with Verena Henshi, who is a doula, who is going to talk to us about being a doula. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. So um, Hello, if you can just tell us a little bit about uh, like the life of a doula, what a doula is and what it is and, and how it differs from midwifery. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I'd say that, that uh, do, doulas can be very different. It, it, you know, that there are lots of different ways of doulaing, just as there are lots of different ways of parenting of of friending um because being a doula is it is a way of being and it's a relationship it's a relationship that we have with uh with a birthing person and that relationship is designed to help the 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 mother the birthing person to feel as safe as they possibly can be safety can be uh an internal state of just feeling held and understood and listened to and supported in their choices by somebody who uh, totally gets them. It can be environmentally safe about guarding the cave or creating the cave, helping them to create an environment that's really good for them. Um, <clears throat> emotionally safe, just feeling feeling held. So, so yes, it's a, it's a relationship. And uh, different doulas will do that in different ways. But um, it's also a very boundaried role, of, of course, because we're not clinical. We're, we're not medical. Or we, some doulas are medically trained. There are doulas who have been midwives or have been um, doctors. Uh, but but in, in the role of doula, we don't bring clinical medical skills in, into play. Um, we work very much in partnership with with those who are able to provide that that skill and that expertise which um is often also needed to keep a woman safe so it's all about trying to create the safest environment possible because that's where mammals birth most comfortably is when they feel safe i i mean i have to say from my own experience uh, and i know you and i have worked together a number of times that that relationship between the caregiver, the healthcare provider, so in most instances, the, the midwife and the doula is crucial because I've always found if you click with the doula, actually your job as a midwife is, is much easier because yeah. the woman or the birthing person's already got that relationship with you. So, yes. it, you know, if something was perhaps veering from um, an expected pathway you can kind of just explore it via the doula with her as a as a partnership um, yes. and as opposed yes. to adding things as a sort of fait accompli this is happening and this is what we're going to do yes yes I mean I think we walk some tight ropes as doulas I'm, I'm going to be honest I mean I think that I mean, I, I, I've been working for a long time now. I've been working for about 11 years as a doula. I'm into my late 70s in number of births. So, I, you know, I've seen a lot of babies being born. And I think when I reflect back on the early days of being a doula, if I'm honest, I can look back at times where I was edging towards collusion, where I was uh, perhaps on the page with the midwife before the mother was. And, and then I wouldn't go as far as saying persuading the mother down a particular pathway, but I, I would say influencing a mother. Mm. Um, 
so we're on these tightropes all the time as a doula because we we are pouring oil uh, in the whole room you know we're we're the buffer between relationships between consultants that may come in and out between midwives that may come in and out between the, the, the blooming person that comes in you know when somebody's pushing saying would you like some toast which can happen you know so um we're we're a buffer between all of those relationships and we are trying to ensure that everybody is as comfortable as they can be in, in what they're doing because that may you know that also you know good atmosphere may you know so if i if i think a midwife needs to drink water and, and a wee you know if i'm picking up those signals i might even say do you know what we're going to be fine for 10 minutes if you you know if you need a quick break um so yeah we are all working together but it but it's a very fine line I, I teach doulas now and and I say to them that we we have three main roles we, we, we're, we're doulas we're doing and that doing might be about signposting or uh, signposting to information or evidence-based research it might be blowing up a pool it might be putting the washing in the machine or, or tucking a toddler back into bed that's woken up at night. Th those are the doing. Those are very active uh, interventions. Uh, we're also beelers. So we're doulas and we're beelers. When we're beelers, we're just there. We're, we're just there on the journey, uh, step by step. A, a companion, we might be carrying some of the baggage, often emotional baggage. Um, but we're just quietly uh alongside that family as as they take the steps that they need to take for that baby to come and sometimes we're don'tlers and we're don'tlers when actually it's time to step out because somebody else needs to step in and that might be a medical intervention it might be actually that the partners stepped in and there's some beautiful uh we often see just that amazing connection and uh time of trust where they're both just in that bubble of, and that's when you know i'll step out and have a cup of tea or go for a walk around the garden or you know i'm being a doctor i'm getting out of the way um so yeah i think we have those three roles and we we hopefully instinctively move between those three um during during the journey um I think another thing that I would want to say uh, about the difference between doulas and midwives is I think that we are a, a freely accessible at a much, much earlier stage mm. than midwives. Um, I mean, rightly so. A midwife doesn't want to be particularly involved in the early labour because there's there's perhaps less of a role. I mean, there's very well, there isn't a role for medical intervention unless there's a problem um and uh you don't really want to be creating any kind of clinical environment in those early hours but actually having somebody to come over and go yeah this is all absolutely fine and let's have a cup of tea or let's go for a walk or let's go out for lunch you know um somebody so they feel safe they feel that somebody is there with them with some you know some experience um a sherpa you know someone that's going to help them up that often very steep hill early labor in my opinion is often much much harder than established i would, agree. Labor. <clears throat> I would absolutely harder. agree um the sensations can be more painful and, and unbearable because the head is totally in the way you know the conscious brain is fully fully involved and in established labor the conscious brain can be a little quieter and women can just get on with it and be in that bubble so i think having a doula in those early early hours or days even can be absolutely invaluable and i think we i learned that more so during coronavirus than at any other time because there was um and, and still is at times periods where uh doulas can't go into hospital with a couple so the couple go in on their own and so we as doulas were saying, OK, well, we'll work with you right up and, until the moment you walk through the door and, and you can go as late as you want, you know. And if we feel jointly that you need to go in at any point, you'll go. And, and those women were walking through the doors and having their babies beautifully because mm. they were ready uh, and they would felt safe and supported. And I think that 
a, a common scenario, particularly with first babies, is that, is that women are not quite sure what, what to expect. Um, so they're, they don't feel confident engaging where they are. And so they may come into hospital perhaps a little early out of fear and anxiety, uh, which is that's the steepest hill if you go into hospital in those in early labour, because the environment isn't necessarily conducive to help you to get to where you well, need to get to. So <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> yeah. So I'm waffling a bit, maybe. But yeah, I, I think that I think dealers have a very unique role in that sense it's a very different role to midwifery yeah definitely. you you mentioned um quite nicely actually that you you're teaching doulas now so what does that training actually involve if somebody was thinking about being a doula okay um i th- i think what i want to say is primarily we talk about what you don't do as a doula you know i think that there's a lot of uh discussion around boundaries and um, and about ensuring always that our focus is on our client being the expert, n- not on us being the expert, because we're not experts. You know, a woman is an expert in her own body and her own baby. She has 24-7 connection with her baby. That, that monitoring is the most effective monitoring in the world, you know, that connection. So we, we talk about empowering or... Well, we can't empower somebody, actually. You know, somebody empowers themselves. But in facilitating that process of of a woman becoming empowered, um, if we're doing any teaching, it's about teaching a woman to be able to trust, to trust her own instinct, to trust um, in her own body's capacity. Trusting in healthcare professionals, you know, we do a lot of work in helping women to develop good relationships. So if there, if there isn't a good relationship with a healthcare professional, we will uh, step in and help her to find somebody else. Um, or we'll, we'll take that somewhere more senior um, to make sure that she does feel safe mm. uh, with, with the whole team that's supporting her because that's so important. So we, we, so there's a lot of discussion about that. When, when people come on, on the doula course with me, I always start by saying you are already doulas. You know, if you have, if you have a passion for supporting women, if you have a a fascination and, and, and an interest in, in the process of birthing and early parenting, then you're a doula, you know, it's, it's, it's a way of being. Um, So what the course does is it helps you to define the doula that you want to be. And how long does um, it last in the course? How long does it take? Well, it, it's it's changed during coronavirus. So it used to be a, a five-day course, often uh, offered over two weekends. So five full days, um, and then uh, a lot of support after, after the course. So once you've done the course, you become part of, I teach with developing doulas. So you become part of the developing doulas community. So you have access to all the other developing doulas. And, uh, you know, we call on each other a lot for information and support and body experience this. And, and do you know the name of the head of midwifery here and all of that. So so it's it's an ongoing relationship that we have with all trainees, but five days. But now when coronavirus uh, hit, we moved the course online. So now we have self-directed learning. We have all of the, uh, we have a lot of materials online, which I love actually, because it's, it's uh, I mean, every doula course provides a manual, but our manual gets updated all the time and added to. So the, the content is there forever when you train. So you work your way through the online content. And then uh I offer nine, nine, two to two and a half hour Zoom sessions where we really lean in to those topics and explore. Um, but it's also about wisdom sharing, because mm. as I said, everybody that comes on the course is already a doula, but they also come with their own experience. It may be experience of looking after others. It may be experience of their own birth. It may be a uh, related experience. I mean, you know, I've had... Um, people that do coaching that have come mm. on the course or people that are uh, carers that come on the course and so on so there's a lot of uh sharing and bonding and and 
kind of creating a, a safe place for them. Because if a doula feels safe, they're more able to enable their clients to feel safe, just the same as midwives. You know, a, a midwife who doesn't feel safe in her working environment is going to be less able to help her client to feel safe because that's how it works. Absolutely. And it is, you know, in the uh, current, in the current uh, times, it, it's a challenge. It, you know, yes. it's, it's a challenge uh, for, I think, for midwives, for doulas, for obstetrics and maternity across the board. Yeah. Um, and, and you said you said something, I think, a little while ago, which uh, I absolutely resonate with is about women trusting their body. And I do think this is something that women seem to have lost the ability to trust I, their I think bodies. It, uh, and so, I, I I think that is a consequence of it being undermined as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, for all of the massive benefit that we have from medicine, um, uh, it has a downside as well because it it, it can pathologize women, and it can uh, be overly cautious in terms of risk taking and and all of that. You know, if you're told well really the safest place to have your babies in hospital which actually isn't an evidence-based statement no <laughs> but, but it's one uh, that if if it's not overtly said it's it's overtly understood that yeah. hospital is the safest place to have a baby well that, and that indeed, that's, that's exactly it. what happened when it when um the, the move many years ago went from home birth to hospital birth was because it was perceived to be a safer option when in that's fact right. that that's wasn't right that's right the case <laughs> so the message in that is well birth isn't safe mm. if we need to move women into hospital to birth safely it must mean that there's an element of unsafety in birth so it's been a kind of drip 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 on undermining really and then of course there is iatrogenic harm in hospital, not just in maternity. I mean, across oh, no, the across whole, board. <laughs> all, you, know, you know, across yeah. Absolutely. So, um, so it can become a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. So, you know, a typical uh, example might be a first-time mum who believes that hospital is the safest place to birth. So that's where she goes, and then there's a uh, what we call a cascade of interventions, and so. Uh, one thing happens which leads to another, which leads to another, which leads to another, which ends up in a car crash of a birth uh, where mum and baby, yeah, are, are both okay, quote, um, but actually you've got a baby that continually feeds and continually cries and a mother who is perpetually anxious and uh, struggling. Uh, and those outcomes are not monitored very well in terms of the long term impact of interventions on families, um, which reinforces the belief that birth is, is a really dangerous thing to do because look at the mess we got into. Yeah. And so they they just go back for more of the same. Yeah. Because it is, it's, uh, it's a tricky one. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. It is. Anyway, thank you so much, Verena. And I will put um contact details in the description box for anyone who uh, wants to get in touch with you and get more information about doulering and how yes, they can access some of that. do i will uh, send you a link to the developing doulas website if anybody is interested in training to be a doula the very first step is to have a telephone conversation um, we do that with everybody long before they they sign up and commit to make sure that it's absolutely right for them, that we're right for them. So, yeah, if anybody's interested in training, get in touch. If anybody is interested in um, finding out more about a doula, uh, the Doula UK website has a whole load of information. What is a doula? What kind of questions might I ask a doula when I interview a doula what might I expect to pay for a doula and so on and then if anybody wants to contact me directly of course you can so I'll send my because and, and, and often it does lead to other things because I know I have I have trained personally <laughs> a few doulas that have become midwives and excellent midwives yes. they are <laughs> yes very much so and yeah. it's it, it's interesting because obviously they have um very dual perspectives then um, yes. because they you know while they're training it is interesting to see how their thought processes then marry up with the 
sort of very medicalized approach very often and their yes. gender approach as well I think that I think that probably where where the greatest rub is for people that move from being a doula to being a midwife is around consent and rights um because as a doula we we have absolute clarity uh, about consent and rights but then we can have because we're not medical <laughs> yes <laughs> it does become um, a little bit more complicated doesn't it when you're it, it does when when you feel that you have responsibility for clinical outcome of course it's more complicated um just to throw in that that i also work with emma ashworth and maddie McMahon, we do a rights and consent workshop it's a three-hour workshop and we work with well, perhaps, uh perhaps with, you could send me the link for that as well and i, I will do the, um... i will do so we work with midwives we've had consultants on there uh we work with yoga teachers and anybody in the birth world at all and it's um, I think that the law around rights and consent is very, very clear. It's very black oh, yes, and white. It's very that. black. It's very black and white. It's us but the implementation the of that law is highly complex, and that's what we talk about. We talk about uh, we we practice some tools that can help us and help the women that we're working with to navigate that supposedly black and white course, which yes. suddenly becomes very blurry. Very, very blurry. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you, Lynn. Take care. And there you have it. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, there are some links in the description box down below um, to take you to Verena's website and other um, resources you might find helpful. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do and look out for us on Facebook on The Motivational Midwife. And I look forward to seeing you next time.